I usually talk about film and TV on this channel, and it's gonna stay that way. But I felt like doing a video on music this one time. And unfortunately, I've decided to do probably the most challenging ranking out there, which is ranking Kanye West's albums. However you order these says a lot about you, and there's no real way of winning. But let's just jump into it. By the way, we're doing official releases only. No, Donda 2 does not count. Chick-fil-A! I really like when Kanye goes gospel, but ironically his exclusively gospel album is probably his weakest attempt at that sound in my opinion. I frequently revisit most of Kanye's albums, but I haven't listened to this one front to back since it came out. And honestly, it was kind of jarring just how weak a couple of these songs are. For example, On God goes for an interesting sound, but ultimately the beat is too repetitive and Kanye's lyricism is quite weak. God Is has an amazing instrumental, but is absolutely ruined by Kanye's horrible singing. That being said, this album also features some of Kanye's most underrated tracks like Salah, which is extremely powerful. He say the rich like me! I think the root of this album's faults is the fact that it's just not very personal. It lacks all the self-reflection, self-deprecation, grit, and humor that I would expect from Kanye. The majority of the album is just Kanye saying how much God means to him, which can be done well, but I think it's quite uninspired for most of these tracks. A lot of these songs were definitely intended to be seen live with the Sunday Service Choir, and I do think they'd be a lot better in that environment. But taking the album as it is, it's definitely Kanye's worst. Watch the Throne starts really strong with some of Kanye and Jay-Z's most fun songs that I always have on repeat, but the longer it goes on, the more it starts dipping into mediocrity, with its cheap, dated beats and unremarkable verses. However, Jay-Z and Kanye at their worst is better than 90% of rappers out there, and I kind of love how this album is just so 2011. It's aching for a Black Eyed Peas feature. I think the reason why a lot of it is kind of weak is just because it lacks the precision and vision you take for granted with these two artists. Almost all the tracks, except for like Murder to Excellence are just songs where they go back and forth flexing that they're at the top of the music industry without saying much else. Watch the Throne reminds me a lot of modern Drake albums with the way that it has a couple hits that everyone loves but actually listening to the album all the way through is a slog since there's not much to it. Which is unfortunate since I think a Ye and J collab album could be so much more. But also it very obviously doesn't want to be anything more than just a fun victory lap for these two. So I guess you gotta respect it. Sidebar I had to use the bathroom really really bad and they didn't give me enough time um, People are going to be mad about this one. Look, I will say that the jump from Watch the Throne to this is pretty big, and I will also say this is quite interchangeable with the following albums. It goes without saying that 808s is insanely influential and distinct and a necessary part of Kanye's discography. I love songs like Heartless, Streetlights, and Coldest Winter because they're able to capture such a unique, moody, brooding, miserable tone that I haven't seen any other artists quite replicate. Every modern rap artist under the sun takes influence from 808s, but you can't copy 808s because only 808s weights is allowed to be 808s. That being said, there are a couple of songs that I'm not too hot on. Paranoid and Robocop don't do much for me, I don't know why. And Jeezy's verse on Amazing feels unnecessary. There's some underrated bangers on this though. Welcome to Heartbreak is top tier Kanye. I love how the verses are able to convey how lost Kanye feels with such simplistic, ironic phrases. They're almost comedic with the way they have a set up punchline structure. Dad cracked a joke, all the kids laugh. Just generally, a strength of this album is how well Kanye is able to express his emotions lyrically through wit and simplicity. 808s is there when you need it, but due to its melancholic nature, there aren't many tracks on here that I'd constantly have in rotation. And I love myself way more than I love you. I normally would put this below 808s, but I think it's quite underrated, so I want to show my respect for it by not putting it in the bomb three. If 808s is dark in a sad way, Ye is dark in a disturbing way. And I think the album being uncomfortably personal and unfiltered and honest is what really makes it stand out, especially because it's so effective at conveying those feelings. I mean, that opening track, I Thought About Killing You, is without a doubt one of the best opening Kanye songs, purely because of how well it sets a mood with its eerie instrumental and unsettling subject matter. This album is very stripped back compared to Kanye's other ones. It's only seven tracks, there's not too many features, and most of the songs choose to be personal over having grandeur, except for Ghost Town, which is without a doubt one of Kanye's most beautiful and grand songs ever, with its otherworldly instrumental and hook that makes you start flowing off into the air. But other than that, I think this album goes for something very different, and I think it's quite successful at it. Even if it doesn't have anywhere near the same amount of classic banger songs Kanye's other albums have. Also, I think listening to this works best when you keep in mind the context it was made in. 2018 was Kanye at his most erratic, until 2022. And this simple 23 minute album works great as a look into where his headspace was during that period. I like some of the Gaga songs. What the fuck does she know about cameras? This album now is a decade old, and in that time it's gone from Kanye's most over-hated album 
album to being his most overrated, but I still like it. This album's sound needs no introduction. It's experimental, it's abrasive, it's visceral, it's industrial, and I think about 75% of the time it really works and ends up creating some of Kanye's most uniquely powerful songs, like New Slaves, Blood on the Leaves, and Bound 2. But 25% of the time it leads to some unexciting misfires, like I'm In It, Guilt Trip, and Send It Up. I'm not quite sure what those three tracks I just mentioned are missing, they just lack a certain edge and creativity. Yeezus is quite a lot like 808s for me, where it really goes in a particular direction that maybe isn't what you expect from Kanye, and it's really impressive when it works, and it's kind of a letdown buzzkill when it doesn't. But overall, I gotta respect the vision. I mean, it does have some of Kanye's best ever songs. It's not anywhere near top five for me, though. Sorry, Yeezus stands. She got pulled over by the police and they shot her husband. Yeah, it was crazy. This is where we go from albums I like to albums I love. Kids See Ghost works as a great B-side to Ye, and just like Ye, I think it's a little unfairly forgotten. I mean, this is the only Kanye album where I can confidently say that I love every song, and they've all consistently been in the main playlist I listened to since the album's release. It does only have seven songs, but still. The production on this, to me at least, became instantly iconic. It's not as out there as some of the other sounds Kanye has tried, but it feels new. And it goes back and forth with Cuddy seamlessly on this. They suit each other very well. Kitsy Ghost is probably the hardest album to place for me, because I think it's kind of flawless, like I have absolutely no issues with it. But also, at the end of the day, it is a 7 track collab album, and I would feel weird putting it any higher. So I just kind of put it right at the bottom of the love section of this ranking. If you're not happy with that decision, just pretend it's a little higher, because it could quite easily be. Donda, Donda. Donda. Donda doesn't get anywhere near the amount of love I think it deserves. Maybe it just came out right place, right time for me. Maybe it was that crazy rollout, but I just adore the aura this thing has. Just like My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy felt like an encapsulation of everything great about Kanye's first four albums, Donda feels like an encapsulation of every Kanye album since. It combines industrial and gospel to create songs that both hit hard and make you levitate, and the way it's all put together is much like Life of Pablo, since the album is very diverse and deliberately all over the place with its tones and subject matter. Ultimately though, I do think trying to copy that Life of Pablo approach is this album's biggest downfall. It's just too bloated. If this album was like 17 tracks instead of 27, I honestly think it would make the top 3 of this list, because there's just so many heavenly tunes on this. I mean, Hurricane, Moon, Come to Life, and No Child Left Behind are all beautiful, and Off the Grid, Heaven and Hell, Pure Souls, and Believe What I Say are just absolute bangers. But of course, this album does feature Tell the Vision, so you can't put it too high. By the way, I would rate this the exact same as Kids See in terms of personal enjoyment, I was just in a slightly more Donda mood when I wrote this script. George Bush doesn't care about black people. Now that we're in the top five, we're entering absolute masterpiece classic territory with Kanye's second studio album. Why do I think this is Kanye's weakest top tier album? I'm not really sure. I kind of just see this album as banger after banger without there being any personal connection or amazing context you can latch onto, which is fine. Bangers are good. I can never get tired of listening to songs like Touch the Sky, Gold Digger, Hey Mama, and We Major. They're some of Kanye's most most infinitely replayable songs. By the way, this album has two massive tracks that I really think deserve to be considered Kanye's best, but they're always forgotten. Those being Roses, Powerful, and Diamonds from Sierra Leone original version. I mean, both versions are pretty much the same, but for some reason I've always gravitated towards the one without Jay-Z. Sorry, Hova. Kanye, can I talk to you for a minute? When I was first outlining this ranking, I put this below late registration, just because looking at the track list, College Dropout isn't wall to wall with hits the way its sequel is. Late registration really feels like college dropout done bigger and better. But then I actually started listening to the album front to back and I was like, wow. Never mind, this is something different. This is the only Kanye album that I would consider relatable in like a grounded, down to earth way, rather than him having to cleverly phrase his rich people problems to make us understand, you know? That's not a diss to his other albums, it's just that College Dropout is very special in that way. And obviously, musically, this was a game changer with its chipmunk soul and unique subject matter, and it really holds up. Oftentimes, with some of these classic albums, they need to be put into context for you to fully enjoy them, but I think College Dropout is pretty timeless and perfect. And things like the Genius documentary just enhance. That. Five nominations. A moment ago, I described late registration as wall to wall bangers, which it definitely is, but graduation is that on a completely different level. Like, pretty much every song on this, I would say, is a 9 bordering a 10, except, of course, Barry Bonds and Drunken Hot Girls. I mean, those two are such a cataclysmic speed bump in the middle of what otherwise would be potentially Kanye's best album. I don't despise them. I think there are some tracks on Jesus is King, Watch the Throne Deluxe, Donda, and maybe Jesus that are about on their level. But 
But when you're next to flashing lights, stronger, homecoming champion, can't tell me nothing, good life, good morning, I wonder, it's just kind of embarrassing. And I don't really know what went wrong with those tracks and why they are even there. I mean, it is a mystery that deserves a video of its own. But yeah, graduation is unbelievably good. I always come back to it when I need to cheer myself up or get in a summary mood. And my wife really didn't like this one. Maybe I'm putting this a little too high for most people, but I just love the vibes here, TBH. I don't care that it's messy because I love every moment of it. I think it's messy done right. You've got gospel, you've got some of his best moody songs, you've got some of his hardest songs, you've got a Kendrick feature, you've got late night drive material, you get some of Kanye's funniest, stupidest lines, and you get a Panda remix. I love that song, yes please. Also, it has probably my favorite ever Kanye song, Saint Pablo. I mean, that is a song where somebody's speaking from their soul with unrestrained passion. And it has a beautiful chorus as well. Just can't get more vibey than Life of Pablo. I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Yeah, no real surprise. This is probably the best album of the 2010s. It's arguably the best rap album ever, and it's potentially the best album ever. It is for me, and I don't even know how to talk about it. Just look at the track list, and pretty much every single song is like a landmark achievement. It's just Kanye at his most grand and epic. Every song has unbelievable production. Every feature is perfect. The progression of it is beautiful, and the story behind the creation of it is iconic. It's everything you love about Kanye's music done at the highest level. My favorite track is probably Devil in a New Dress. That guitar solo and the way Rick Ross comes in is insane. I think Power is perfect as well, you just can't beat the classics. But if I had to pick out some more underappreciated hits, I would say Lost in the World, that is unbelievably beautiful. And Hell of a Life, no one ever talks about Hell of a Life, but I just love how fiery and different it is. It feels like something that could go on Yeezus. Anyways, that's the end of this video. Feel free to tell me your ranking in the comments, I'm curious. I want to know how wrong you guys think I am. Thanks for watching, goodbye.